Well, a week ago we were talking about snow, ice and bitterly cold conditions. What a flip around in the last week to 10 days. Thanks for clicking on to edition 78 of the Global Weather and Climate Report. It is Sunday the 20th of January and we have got some remarkable conditions across the UK and Ireland to speak about in today's video. But before we actually continue with the video, be sure to like, share and subscribe with your friends and family if you haven't already done so because I have managed to achieve the uh, new benchmark of 6,000 subscribers. A big thank you to everybody new to the channel but also existing subscribers who have shown their support over recent years. In particular, the channel has grown from less than 1,000 to over 6,000 in just the last year and a half or so. So remarkable growth. And I would like to say a big thank you to everybody for your support. If you haven't already done so and you are interested in all things weather, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any upload. There is uploads every day of the week. So it is busy here at Marfog and Weather HQ. I do do a, a day job. I drive lorries up and down the A9 between Inverness and Glasgow as well. So I am busy. And... Um, Sometimes I don't get the some of the um some of the comments, and I do apologize if I happen to miss any of your comments. I do read them. It may sometimes be that it takes me a couple of days before I can get through them, just due to my my busy schedule, uh and whatnot. So um, but say uh, like I say, a, a massive thank you for your support over recent times and also recent years as well. Upcoming seven days off the ECMWF extended. This is actually the control run, by the way. And what a contrast this is. This is a 360 degree difference, by the way, from a week ago, where we had strong blocking over the North Atlantic and Greenland. We had the cold pool over North America and Western Europe. Now we've turned the pattern on its head, courtesy of the MJO rotating out of the cold phases, through the warm phases, and now it's edging back towards the, the cold phases, and the pattern may respond in the next couple of weeks. So we'll certainly be monitoring that situation very carefully here at Marfog and Weather HQ and watching the overall February forecast. I still go for a cold spell during the month of February. How long, how strong that cold spell will be will remain to be seen. We could see the response of the sudden stratospheric warming that took place around 10 days ago. Do we see that response in coinciding with the MJO moving through phases 7, possibly into phases 8? What does that mean, phase 7 and phase 8? Well, if we look at this chart, you can see that phase 7 uh, is enhanced convection over the western portion of the Pacific Ocean. That tends to correlate to, at this time of the year, northerly blocking negative um, North Atlantic Oscillation with a high pressure over Greenland. Upcoming seven days certainly is the opposite of that. But remember the, the response time, there is a lag in the atmosphere, as is often the case between the uh, what takes place within the tropics. Remember the Manjulian Oscillation is in an enhanced sail of convection that uh, circumnavigates the, the equatorial portion of the planet. So it's all the way down here over and uh, the western portions of the Pacific Ocean, just to the east of Indonesia and Australia. When you enhance that convection over this region of the world, it has a different response to the mid and high latitude pattern. But the upcoming seven days, firmly warmer than average across North America, thanks to a deep trough over uh, the North Pacific. That's driving Pacific Air across North America. We're also seeing that mirror image over the Atlantic into Europe. Strong deep negative over North Atlantic and Greenland drives mild ocean air across the continent. However, there is a little bit of a difference at the moment, and that is all courtesy of what's taking place with the fern effect. It will help if I get to the right chart, wouldn't it? So you can see here, a remarkable afternoon has been achieved in the UK. We've seen a temperature reach 19.6 celsius that is not wrong by the way 19.6 celsius has been achieved this afternoon on the 20th of january 2024 that is a new january uk record by the way 
and it surpasses a temperature that was achieved of 18.3 inch Marlow and a Boeing back in 2003 and Aber in 1958 and 1971. Now, the reason why we've had such remarkable and pretty ridiculous warmth, to be honest, is all courtesy of warmer in upper levels of the atmosphere, for one, but also strong winds, gale force winds, actually. Look at these temperatures. Now, the temperatures are gradually coming down with a change in wind direction. Now, we've seen the frontal system edging in, but before that frontal system edged in, we had very strong west to south westerly winds. Now, if we look at the pressure chart in particular, and let's have a look at the European view, because this is important. This is the reason behind the warmer. So this is off the medial seal. This is the pressure chart over Europe early hours of this morning. You can see here a couple of key important features to speak about. First and foremost, we've got a big uh, pressure gradient, even over the UK, between the UK and an area of low pressure up near Iceland here. So we've got a gradient of 983 or thereabouts and a few hundred miles to the southeast we've got pressure well over a thousand millibars so number one that generates very strong winds we've also got you can see here the squeeze in the isobars here representing strong winds we've also got a frontal system uh, that is just to the northwest of the british isles so therefore we've got a southwesterly wind flow now this area of high pressure over the heart of europe right over the center of europe we've got pressure at 943 millibars what that's doing is it's acting as a wheel. Now, remember a few days ago, we recorded our seen temperatures, questionable temperatures at that, by the way. Uh, and our friend Harry Hardrada uh, talks about the, the, the questionable readings down in the south of Spain. I'm not going to get into the details of that because I know that's going to upset a few folk. But there has been weather stations uh, seen on rooftops. And the question mark is, is some of these weather stations being used as official readings uh, we need to be careful with regards to contamination and um, you know some artificial warming at some of these stations so that's an our story for another day but regardless of that we've seen temperatures into the upper 20s across the southern portions of iberia that area of high pressure over the center of europe is acting as a we will draw in some of that warm air up into the uk and ireland here that is one component that frontal system edging in from the northwest is increasing the strength of that southwesterly wind. So we've got the warmer in place, but that southwesterly wind crossing over the hills of parts of Ireland, Northern Ireland, England, Wales, and particularly the northern half of Scotland has been allowing the temperatures, mild temperatures at the best of times. You can see here, if we look at the 850 temperatures of the, the GFS chart here, you can see the warmer ahead of the frontal system approaching from the west. That frontal system, by the way, is now edging in from the west. You can see the colder behind that front. But big contrast in temperature, 850 between the UK and just the northwest over the Atlantic. As you can see here, area of low pressure in the northwest is drawing some of that colder, bitterly colder at minus 58 Celsius, by the way, over the heart of the Greenland ice cap. We've seen just a week ago temperatures of only minus 11 at the same location that hit minus 58. Simple reason for that is the strong uh, negative North Atlantic oscillation has a block of warmer over Greenland, hence the cold over North America and Europe. Now we've got the opposite. So you've got that block of colder, the trough over Greenland with a, with a subs uh, subsequent uh, positive ridge over north america and over europe here generating very mild conditions here but you can see here the warmth across the uk and ireland but the strong west to south westerly wind is enhancing that warmth so you look at the uh, the, the temperature profile over europe at the moment and we've got the uh, very very mild conditions over the european continent if we look specifically at the uk uh, you can see here that we have got uh, some good reasoning behind why temperatures have hit 19.6 at Kinloch U. Even the current temperatures, we've got 15 Celsius at Al Nahara. Uh, we did see earlier on a temperature of 16, 17 Celsius even on this chart. You can see here uh, that's 17 at Loch Lascarnock here. The reason why is if you look at the pressure chart, we've got these strong winds crossing over the hills this is known as the fern effect downslope compressional warming as we've got that stiff southwesterly wind the winds cross over the hills as those um 
the winds blow over the mountains, they then descend the lee side of the hills and you're actually compressing the air and heating it up in response. And that is why we're seeing this remarkable warmth across particularly the northern UK as the winds are blowing over the Grampians and the Cairngorms and the Northwest Highlands. We're seeing that very, very significant warmth. Now, you can see 850 temperature anomalies, upcoming seven days, very cold air over Greenland. So as I explained, minus 58 at Summit Camp in Greenland, very mild air over North America and Europe. We've got the negative here over the North Pacific and Iceland, uh, sorry, uh, Alaska. That's driving Pacific air across the continent of North America. We're also seeing a big negative over the North Atlantic in Greenland that is driving very mild Atlantic air across Europe so that's the reason why we've got this ridiculous warmth but if uh, as we play through the next week to 10 days you can see here the turnaround taking place we see the warming taking place over greenland north atlantic cold now replacing the warmth over north america and europe the reason why that's the case is we're actually seeing the uh, the mandrillon oscillation which is an, a pulse of an enhanced convection over the western pacific that then translates to a northerly block high pressure over Greenland, negative North Atlantic oscillation, and that tends to support cold. That combined with the sun stratospheric warming that took place that took place about 10 days ago as well may also play into the equation. See recent videos because that explains a little bit more with regards to the MJO sun stratospheric warming and the type of pattern that I expect to see taking place during the month of February. This is the, the month, the date. So this is the first 28 days of January. Temperature anomalies globally, you can see here, will continue with the cold over Western Europe and also over the heart of North America, stretching from Nunavut territory, Yukon, right the way down into the Southern United States. Warm across Eastern Canada, as you can see here, thanks to the block, the negative North Atlantic oscillation pattern. But uh, we will see a shift in the next few days, both in Europe and North America, with regards to the current warm pattern. You will see that we have got a largely warmer than average Australia, give or take parts of Western Australia, Northern Territories, Victoria, uh, New South Wales. We've got areas of cool and average. Central Africa, where it's been quite wet, uh, cool and average, but we've got warmth both north and south of that. Central Asia, warmer than average. Parts of China, particularly the western side of China is seeing uh, wet, uh, cool and average conditions due to wetter than average conditions. Part of uh, Russia, you can see here, is above average. Globally, we continue with that warm theme overall. So let's take a quick uh, tour at the extremes that have taken place around the world over the last seven days here. So you can see here the source region of the warmth that we're seeing across the UK and Ireland, down across the Balearics, Iberia, we'll have a temperature of 26.7. In uh, Ibiza here, recorded in January 21st. If reliable, this would be the, the highest temperature ever recorded in January in the Balearic Islands, which is quite interesting here. We had actually temperatures back down below minus 50. Now, this could be the seeds to the change that I'm talking about as we move into February, as the cold starts to come back out of the Arctic once again and towards the middle altitude pattern. We're seeing minus 51, by the way at the Old Crow in the Yukon, this lowest temperature at the station since January 2012, which is quite interesting, according to Thierry Goose. And uh, we have seen some very, very warm conditions over uh, the United States in recent times as well. Also, Portugal set a new national record, possibly in southwestern Portugal of 26.3 Celsius. Um, also, some very, very mild conditions across parts of Siberia where we've had the uh, temperatures uh, only of minus 17.7. That's 24 Celsius above average, by the way, in parts of Siberia. Going down under, 36.4, not a maximum, but actually a minimum temperature recorded at the uh, one station, Birdsville in Queensland. This is the second highest temperature ever recorded in Australia, only 0 0.2 Celsius off the all-time highest minimum temperature. Finally, new surge of cold over Eastern Asia. We've seen temperatures down to minus 35 in North Korea, minus 20 in South Korea, minus 10 um, in some mountain areas of Taiwan, minus 2.4 uh, 
outskirts of Hong Kong. Thanks for watching. I do greatly appreciate it. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll be back again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.